It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brain of Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the UFC bantamweight fighter, Rochelle Pennington. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in the MMA career? Honestly, I had no clue. I've just been an athlete since I was five years old. Um, my biggest goal was to be some sort of professional athlete. Uh, I always thought it would be a WNBA player. And then my senior year, I broke my back snowboarding. After that, I mean, life changed. I was actually just going through rehab and I made the joke of fighting just because when I was going through rehab, my mom and I were at the gym working out. Uh, the first team I started with, they were training in a little yoga studio in the back corner on the puzzle piece mats that are like a half inch thick and they were doing judo and um, jujitsu. So they're slamming each other around and then choking each other out and just looked really intense. So I made the joke that like, I'm gonna do that. But I think my mom thought it would just be something good to get me going again. So uh, we went in, we talked to the coach. The next day I went in for my first training session. It was sparring and I absolutely fell in love with it. Here I am 13 years later. What was it like obviously getting started at the age of 19 so young? You know, I mean, it was awesome. At that time, women's MMA wasn't really a thing. Um, but just having an athletic background really helped me out. I grew up being a huge tomboy. I have guy cousins and a brother who I would always get into fist fights with. And like, I just always had a, like, I was tough from the get go. And so getting into fighting, I mean, it just at 19, like I said, I mean, athletic background, it was just something that was a new challenge and it was super exciting. It was super fun. And, um, you know, I mean, like I said, I obviously fell in love with it to come this far. What was that debut like making your first debut in March? For my pro debut or my pro debut? Yeah, pro day. Um, I'll never forget that fight. I actually was fighting Randy Couture's ex-wife, Kim Couture. And, you know, they've been around the MMA world, whatever. Um, for some reason, when I turned pro, it became so serious. And it was the pressure I put on myself. I remember we were fighting in an old grocery store in Wyoming. and that's when people were still allowed to like smoke inside and it was just rowdy cowboys and they had this stage going well you had to walk down the hallway from the locker rooms then you would walk out of basically the back of the grocery store into the grocery store up the little stage to the octagon but i remember when we were getting ready to walk out there was exit doors and i just started freaking out and i told my coaches i was like uh can we just go out these exit doors i'm ready to go and they were like what and i was like i just freaked out and then um they had me do a couple breathing techniques and then my song started playing. I walked out, that cage door closed. And then all of a sudden, like everything sunk in, it zoned, like I zoned in. And then uh, I ended up getting a TKO win in the second round. What was that feeling like when you got that TKO win and your first win? It was super exciting. You know, I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Here I am having a successful amateur career. Now I went pro and just stepped up to the big leagues and I'm getting my wins. So, uh, you know, I was super proud, especially the fact that like you go through this sport and I always say, I mean, it's an extremely physical sport, but at the end of the day, like I say, it's 90% mental, 10% physical. So to overcome those struggles and those emotions I was having right before walking out, like what an accomplishment, you know? How was it like coming up in the MMA, getting into UFC? Um, so you know, like I said, when I first started this, women's MMA wasn't really a thing. And I remember I fell in love with it. And about eight months into it, I told some people, I was like, I'm gonna be one of the first women to the UFC. And they laughed at me. And they were like, yeah, okay. And at that time, I was fighting people like multiple times, just because there was no um, competition for women, like, there wasn't very many of us. And then, um, you know, it was just one of those things to where 
every opportunity that presented itself Invicta came around. So I remember one of my teammates was fighting for the very first Invicta. My family and I, we drove out there to go support her. I introduced myself to the president, the matchmaker and kind of just like put my foot in the door. I ended up signing a multi-fight contract with them. And then all of a sudden UFC offered the opportunity to women and it was, it happened to be in my division. And at that time, I honestly, like I was going through a rocky path with just everything. Like I was getting really burnt out in MMA. And uh, so I stepped back, I did some professional boxing and then I stepped back from that and I was like, I'm just done fighting. And everybody was like, no, you're not. Like, you're really good at this. You're gonna go to the ultimate fighter. And I was like, no, I'm not. And then finally, one of my really good friends um, just growing up, she ended up flying into town from Florida at the time. And she had her car packed and she's like, we are road tripping to Las Vegas. You are going to do this show. You're not wasting your talent. So my mom and I um, and my friend, we jumped in the car. Uh, we drove all throughout the night, got to Las Vegas. Uh, I slept for 30 minutes and then I went through 13 hours of tryouts. And, you know, that was really the pivotal point in my career. Everything changed after that. I ended up getting on to the Ultimate Fighter and then signing with the UFC. Like, I've been super active from my season. and it's been uh it's definitely been a journey of course what was it like going from you were fighting and then you didn't know if you wanted to fight what were you going doing during that time that you were trying to figure out whether to transition into not fighting or fighting i was just working and i was just living my life i'm super active i live in colorado i'm always doing things outdoors so you know i was just hanging out with family and living life and it was just like I was kind of tired of athletic stuff. It was just, I mean, like I said, I've been doing athletic things since five years old and it takes a toll on the body. It takes a toll on you mentally, emotionally, physically. And so it was kind of one of those things to where I just needed a reset. And um, during that time, like I said, I mean, if it wasn't for my friend dragging me out there and that pivotal point, who knows? Like I'd probably still be back at it, but probably just wouldn't be the same journey that it is now. Um, and so it just, it kind of relit the flame for me, which is super important. I tell everybody, no matter what you're doing, you need to have fun. Of course, what was it like after your first fight in the UFC 171 to get ready for your next fight against Holly Holmes? It was just wild. Like, you know, going from these smaller promotions with like smaller crowds into all of a sudden some of the largest arenas in the world and at that time it was a huge pay-per-view card and it was sold out and it was just like it was wild like i'll never forget them opening those curtains and just seeing everything and i was like wow okay and so that was a lot to take in and stuff and then after going out there and you know the fight um i ended up losing to andrade at a close decision and then when they called me back and they offered holly home like at that time that was the biggest profile fight of my career and you know, Holly was riding a huge hype train and it was going to be the first time women were ever headlining a main event and co-main event. So there was just a lot of things. And it, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to embrace the journey. Like there's nothing you can do except for be the best that you can be and just embrace the journey and have fun through all of it. What was it like for you to train to fight Holly Holmes, but originally you were going to be fighting Ashley Smith due to an injury? Um, nothing really, you know, I mean, I have an idea of what all my opponents are going to do. Um, we all have our own styles and stuff. And so, of course, it was kind of just one of those things to where it was like, I think the fight changed at two or three weeks out. It was super frustrating. But the fact that they got a replacement was super exciting. Um, because as an athlete, you don't want to put in all that hard work. And then all of a sudden, it feels feels like it goes to waste. So when Ashley stepped up, it was just like, we watched some film on her and I was like, okay, whatever. Like at the end of the day, you can't control what your opponents to do. What is, uh, what your opponent is doing. You can only control what you're doing. So my main focus was just on myself. How is it like, obviously after that injury, getting to go face to face with Holly Holmes in the UFC 184? It was exciting. Like I said, I mean, it was the first time that women were headlining the main event, co-main event. Um, so everything that they had going on for that, all the media stuff that you had to do, um, it was at the Staples Center. Like there was just so much happening that like, it was, I mean, all you can say is just embrace that journey and take it for what it is, you know? 
What was it like for you to get to face your former tougher coach, Misha Tate? It was uh, exciting. It was, there was a lot of emotions in that one. Cause you know, I mean, it went from, I like don't have idols. Like my idol is like my mom and whatnot. Like I respect a lot of people and their accomplishments and the things that they do. And like my respect goes far to like so many different athletes and people who are successful in life and whatever. Um, but the way that they put it was like, you know, Misha was my idol. Um, she was the face of women's MMA back in the day. And so it was just kind of like, you know, I knew of her and her success and stuff and seen her around at some of the Invicta fights. And then going on to the ultimate fighter, she became my coach. And, you know, that's when we built a little bit more of a relationship. When the ultimate fighter ended, she asked me to train with her for her second fight against Rhonda. So then we built like a friendship. And then from there, um, that another history in the making was the first time that UFC was ever going to be in New York. And they called me and they said, Misha called me out and asked to fight me. And so it was kind of just like your idol becomes your rival type thing. And, you know, to share the octagon with her and somebody who's like a legend in the sport for women's MMA was, I mean, it was truly an honor. And just given the situation and the circumstances and how big the event was, like, that is one event that like, I don't know. It was super unique out of all the events that I've ever been to. And, um, you know, I remember after the fight when Misha retired and stuff, like we just definitely, we shared a moment in the octagon and like our friendship came back out, but it was kind of like that. I had to separate that. I had to like put my face on and like, just be like, Oh, you're the enemy. Like, I don't want to be your friend right now. And um, you know, I remember her just trying to talk to me all throughout fight week and it was just like, get away from me. Like, we'll talk after this is said and done. But, you know, like I said, we shared a moment in the octagon and she just told me that, uh, I'm super tough and she knows I'll be world champion and she looks forward to watching me rise. And it's something that I'll always respect Misha, you know? Of course, during that moment, what was it like getting to face your friend for the Bantamweight Championship? Same thing. It's just, we all meet because of the sport. And so, you know, I mean, you take that risk and you have to understand that we're in the same division. And so it was kind of one of those things to where Amanda and I started on Invicta together and we've supported each other's careers. My family's always supported her. And, um, you know, it was just, we had our friendship. And then of course, like I said, I mean, we're in the same division and at the end of the day, she was the world champion. She has exactly what I want. So, I mean, it's bound to happen. What was it like, obviously, going up against Amanda Numis? Just like going up against anybody else, except for a bigger goal, a bigger accomplishment. I mean, you have the world title. And so, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people, they see these champions as like invincible and everything else. And like, same thing. They're super successful and they're awesome at what they do, but they're human beings and everybody's beatable and whatnot. So people like, get this like, I don't know, something going on in their head. But for me, it was just another fight that, uh, you know, I mean, was a bigger accomplishment. Of course, what was the training like preparing for the Amanda Newman's banterweight versus any other your other opponent's fights? Nothing. I mean, I prepare the same way and I focus on things I can. Uh, for me, it was just like, that fight was after 18 month layoff. And so coming back from major surgeries and stuff, like camp was a lot different. It was harder to kind of like function the way that I was used to functioning. Um, I developed a thyroid issue that like made weight a lot different. And uh, so there was like just different challenges throughout that camp. But other than that, I mean, still the same grind. You're still doing all the different aspects of the sport. Of course, coming off of surgery, what was it like getting back into training? tough it was super tough like going into surgery I had this mind frame when I had to have total reconstructive uh shoulder surgery and bicep and everything else uh I tore my bicep and my shoulder two weeks before I even fought Misha and so going into that fight and then after that fight just having to deal with it and have the surgery you know I had it in my head that okay even though my right shoulder's done my right wrist was done I could still jab and do stuff with my left but then after surgery, the doctors were like, you really can't do anything. Like, You need to sit down. You need to recover because if you're sitting here punching with your left, you're going to cause like strain. 
it's going to eventually affect this side and like this whole situation. It was just like, are you guys serious? So like my hopes and dreams felt like they were shot down at that point. And, um, I never had surgery before. So coming back from it, like I, I realized like my body develops a ton of scar tissue super quick. Like I had really, really rough recoveries and, uh, that was frustrating. Of course. What was it like getting to go once again with Holly Holmes in the 245? Annoying as hell. Like, I mean, you can watch Holly, Holly's fights now. She just fought Ketlin a few weeks ago in the same exact fight style. Like, she held me up against the cage, and, you know, everybody can sit there and have the argument, well, you should have got off the cage and this, that, or another. But, like, people don't realize, for one, how hard it is to get off the cage. And then on top of that, you have Holly, who's way taller than me, and she's using head position and everything else and using her leverage. Like, it's not easy at all. And you can see it with the Ketlin fight, too. Ketlin spent most of her time up against the cage as well. And it's just like, <sighs> that fight. That's one of the ones that I was just like, you know, I watched it for what it is and whatnot. And, yeah, when we separate, I should capitalize more. But it is what it is. Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing to say about it. It was a boring-ass fight. Of course, once you are locked inside that cage, what is going through your head once you obviously get that opportunity to finally fight your opponent? Nothing. I'm zoned in to exactly what I'm doing. It's like I go into autopilot and all these years, all these months, all these hours and minutes that I put in of hard training, like it just comes naturally. And I like, you know, I'm only under the big lights. It seems like a black film goes around the octagon, so I can't see anything on the outside and I can hear my coaches. And I'm just out there doing what I do. Of course, going into the week of the fight, what is it like cutting weight and preparing for that fight? Um, you know, weight cut is the main focus during that week. The preparation's already done. So I try not to even really think about the fight. You know, I do sports psychology and stuff, and it, I do more meditation during fight week and do my fight week obligations and um, you know, just really dial down in my nutrition and the things that I have to do for the weight to fall off. And that's it. So, I mean, there's where the focus is at. And that's honestly like the hard part of all of this. What is that feeling like for you going into weight, weight day and obviously getting weight and going face to face with your opponent for the first time? Exciting. Exciting because I can eat. Exciting because I can finally drink and that crap's over with. And then, you know, I mean, facing off with your opponent, that's just part of the show. And so it's like, at the end of the day, like the face off, the entertainment part, all that stuff, like, yeah, it's just like, okay, like, I'd like to have the opportunity to look my opponents in the eye and just see what I'm going for. And so it's, I mean, it's just part of the ride, but really it's just, I'm excited for the food. What is that feeling like for you on weight day when you know that all your hard work has about to be paid off? It's super exciting you know each and every step is an accomplishment but the minute that you step on that scale and you have made weight like that's the biggest accomplishment because like I said that's the hardest part and a lot of people struggle with it it's not easy like people don't see that behind the scenes struggle um and what we really put our bodies through and then the way that we have to replenish and regroup ourselves in a 24-hour period and then go out there and put on a fight of our life how many days, months, and weeks does it take for you to cut weight before the fight? It all just depends. It depends on where I'm at. It depends on if I've been training and doing whatever. It depends on if I've been on vacation. Like, it honestly it all just depends. How long does your training typically take for an opponent? Um, same thing. It all varies. I mean, UFC can call tomorrow and offer a fight for next weekend. And it's just up to us to be professionals and if we're ready to take the fight or not. Um, but most typical fight camps are anywhere from like six to 10 weeks. Uh, I personally like shorter fight camps just because they get super exhausting. What does it mean to have a USC fighter behind your last name? It's an accomplishment for myself. Um, you know, I mean, it's just something that all my hard work has paid off and yeah. I just, that's something that like, you know, a lot of people admire and whatever, but like, it's just more for like me and like, damn, I did this. Of course, how is it like, obviously knowing that you're living out your dream of becoming a UFC fighter? 
That's awesome. Just grateful. I'm grateful that I get to, you know, follow my passion every single day. I'm grateful that I get to wake up and go to the gym and just live my dream. And I make my own schedule and I'm able to travel and provide for myself. And, you know, it brings my family together in a different way. And it's just, it's one of a kind. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Like I'm super grateful and blessed that I've been dealt these cards. Of course, after arriving to the ring, how much time do you spend before the fight? Arriving to the arena? Yeah, after arriving to the arena, how much preparation um, there for? They usually take us like three hours early to the arena. So whenever our call time is, depending where you're at on the card. And I don't do anything besides hang out. Like we do our drug tests and get our hands wrapped. And other than that, I'll do some stretching. I lay on the mat. I'll watch the other fights as they start. I'll watch like the guys in my corner warm up. Um, yeah, you just kind of hang out until it's go time. And probably like two fights before mine is when I start warming up and get ready, break a sweat and blow out my lungs for the first time. And then before I know it, they call you and Pennington, you're on deck and you start walking down that hallway. Of course, what does the feeling feel like when they call your name for ready for the fight to start? It's exciting. You get a, you get a rush, you get bunch of like nerves um the nerves I take as like you know it's like butterflies in your stomach but I say it's my dragons waking up and it's just my body telling me I'm ready for war and uh you know I mean you're gonna get locked in there with somebody else who wants to take your head off and so it's like scary exciting like there's a ton of emotions that go behind it it's really like I think you can talk to anybody and they really wouldn't have the right words for what it's like to walk out to that that octagon so how is that feeling like when you get your hand raised after you won the fight knowing that all of your hard work has paid off oh it's super exciting it's like anything I mean you accomplished the ultimate goal you got the win and you're one step closer to what the true goal is and you know I mean as soon as that last bell goes off it's just like the weight on your chest is just gone because finally everything is said and done all those weeks that you just put in like now it's done. You've accomplished something. Now you can have a little bit of a break. Of course, are there any favorite songs that you have that you listen to before, obviously, the preparing for the fight? Um, I'm a huge music. So music just varies on my mood. Uh, if I want to be in a mellow mood, if I like need to get hype, if I need to like I don't know, settle my emotions down. Like there's all kinds of stuff. So it honestly just depends. Uh, I go anywhere from country to instrumental music, to relaxation music, to um, alternative music, uh, to rap. Like I'm all over the board. What are some of your favorite memories and moments in your UFC career? Um, there's something from each and every fight. Like it's hard to just point out because it's a step in your journey like it's just all part of it but I mean if I had to point out something it would be my very first fight into UFC it would be uh fighting for the world title and then um fighting Misha in New York what is something that you learned now that you didn't know before getting into UFC um I don't know. I mean, I did MMA for a few years before you getting into UFC. So, I mean, I don't know. Nothing really. Who are some of the people that you look up to in the sport of UFC? Um, I don't really look up to anybody. I, uh, like I said, I mean, as far as like sport wise, um, I do like give credit where it's due and stuff and like, you know, I admire certain styles and everything, but it's just cool to see everybody go out there and like fight and put on exciting fights and fight for the different things that are valuable to them and um, stuff like that. So, I mean, everybody has a little part in that, I guess, the entertainment part. What are some of your future goals in UFC and who are some of the opponents you choose to face next? I wanna face anybody that I haven't fought. Everybody brings a different challenge to the table. Uh, the ultimate goal is to become the world champion. As soon as I become the world champion, I want to defend my belt once or twice. And then 
move on to the next chapter of my life. What's that feeling like going to feel like, obviously, when you get to have that world championship around your waist? I'll let you know when it happens. What what advice would you have future wrestlers looking to get into wrestling in college and move on to professional? You know, it's like I tell anybody. I just tell everybody that if you're passionate about something, stay true to it, have fun through it, and, you know, always believe in yourself, even if other people don't believe in you, and work hard. What advice would you have women that are looking to get into UFC? Same thing. Same exact thing. It doesn't, men or women, like my advice will not change. What advice would you have future people that are in UFC now looking to compete for the first time or even go for that title bail? Same thing. Just be yourself. Have fun. Um, you've worked hard for it and just all the encouraging things like, you know, I mean, each fight, like there's no easy fights. And so at the end of the day, like you just got to focus on what you can control and embrace the journey and have fun through it. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rocky P MMA and then Instagram. I'm Raquel underscore Pennington. Thank you again, Raquel Pennington, for your interview, and best of luck in your future in the bantamweight UFC fighting. Appreciate it. Good talking to you. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk and You can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Rochelle Pennington, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. Have a good one. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.